Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana coming at you with another kick ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about five reasons why realtors won't give you the time of day, five reasons why you feel like perhaps you're repelling realtors instead of attracting realtors, five reasons why perhaps they're slamming the proverbial door in your face or they're giving you lame objections, excuses. Maybe they're telling you to call later or they already have a lender or thanks, but no thanks. I'm not interested. Maybe they're even booking an appointment, but then they don't show up or maybe they even show up and you have a meeting, but then nothing comes of it. Maybe they even give you lofty promises that they're going to send you referrals. And then it ends up just being empty promises that don't deliver. Whatever the case is, I feel your pain. I know that's frustrating. And obviously, continuing to bang your head against that same wall, spinning your wheels in the same spot, going nowhere with all these lame excuses, objections, smoke screens, buyer defense mechanisms, etc., is a special kind of suck we want to avoid at all costs immediately. And that's why we're doing this training today, to walk you through and to shine the light on the path so you can see clearly exactly what you may be doing wrong and also how to avoid those landmines. So you can go straight to what works and start to attract versus repel. Now, I have a 13-year-old son. His name is Ezra, and uh, he's a really smart guy. He loves Rubik's Cubing, and he loves magnets, and he loves chess, and he cleans my clock, by the way, at chess on a regular basis, much to my dismay. Because he studies chess a lot more. Uh, I have a training I'm going to come out with soon that's on that topic. It's called wanting to win versus de deserving to win. There's a big difference between wanting to win and deserving to win. And I want to win at chess, but I don't deserve to win at chess because I just don't practice. I don't pursue mastery. He does. So he cleans my clock every time. But anyway, that's another story. We're going to come back to our topic of the day, which is attracting realtors and what causes us to repel realtors? Well, my 13-year-old son, he loves magnets. And he let me donate this handy-dandy little magnet here. And this magnet, if you spin it one way, it repels. You can see I try and press these bad boys together, and they just repel. They just bounce back, right? But if I just one click... One click in my strategy, one click in my approach, one click in how I adjust my posture, my positioning, my languaging. And all of a sudden, it is not only attractive, but it's like super glue. Like I can't get this thing apart. It's locked. I cannot get this thing apart. You get these realtors stuck to you like super glue as opposed to being in repulsion all just from one click in your strategy, one click in your approach, one click in your mindset, one click in your positioning. So the good news is it doesn't take much to make a shift from repulsion mode where you're repelling realtors to attraction mode where they're stuck to you like super glue. Just one click. And I'm going to give you five clicks today. All you need is one. But when I highlight these five clicks for you, the things that repel realtors versus attract realtors, you're going to find chances are you're being the culprit of at least one of these, if not multiple. And frankly, it's not your fault because you went to mortgage school. They never taught you this stuff, right? They teach you how to find a home for the loan. They teach you the regulations, the compliance. They teach you how to package the deal, so on and so forth. They don't teach you how to attract top producing realtor partners to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. That's not on the topic list, right? So you have to figure this stuff out and it's not an easy code to crack. You can't just Google search it, which is why we've been in business for 18 years, helping mortgage pros crack this code. Because again, it's not an easy code to crack. So without further ado, let's get to it and do it, shall we? The first reason why realtors are not giving you the time of day is lack of confidence and certainty. So in other words, they're just feeling your energy. They feel your lack of certainty, your lack of confidence. And they're like, dude, if you're not sold on you, do dead. If you're not sold on you, why should I be sold on you? 
If you're not certain about what you have to offer and the unique value you bring to the table, why should I be certain about that? If you're not convinced, why should I be convinced? So there's an intuitive turning off of the channel or lowering the volume. Usually it's switching the channel versus lowering the volume. The moment they feel a wavering or a wobbling in your certainty and they feel like you don't really own it, believe it yourself, that's where they tune out. And that's the starting point where it's like the beginning of the end, right? Where it's like, thanks, but no thanks. Or they hang up on you or they give you the buyer defense mechanism of, I already have a lender. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm already happy with my current lender guy or gal. So the buyer defense mechanism is a knee jerk reaction. It's like if you go into a store and the clerk asks you, can I help you with anything? What do you say? No, I'm just what? I'm just looking. So that's a buyer defense mechanism that we have when a clerk asks us if we need any help with anything. The same thing goes with these realtors. They're going to have knee-jerk buyer defense mechanisms that are baked into their DNA, especially now when everyone and their dog is chasing after the same realtors, especially now when they're having their time wasted on a regular basis where every Tom, Dick and Harry in the loan space clamoring after the same number of realtors. And a lot of realtors have left the business. So there's even less realtors to go around. So there's even more of an onslaught, even more of a stampede of these loan officers wasting their time, showing up as loan leeches and mortgage parasites, trying to get loans from them. So we can't blame them for being jaded, right? If we were in their shoes, we'd feel the same way too. So we want to come from a place of empathy and compassion and realize that, hey, their perspective and their knee-jerk reaction to deploy these buyer defense mechanisms is totally valid. In fact, if we're really honest, we would do the exact same thing. So coming from that compassion and empathetic place, we can now bring empathy and that's going to help to melt the high wall of resistance. But we can't just have empathy. We have to have certainty. Certainty is when you know that you know that you know that you're the bomb freaking diggity and the no brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth minded real estate agents to partner with. And because you own it to your core, you're so certain to your core, it's easy to transmit and transfer that certainty from your heart and mind to their heart and mind. It's called certainty transference. You see, if you only have one leg underneath your table, you're going to have a wobbly table. If you have four legs, you're going to have a pretty solid table. If you have 40 legs, you're going to have an even more solid table. The more legs under that table, the more certain you are, right? So those legs are references. So one of the things I recommend to my clients, especially newbies, but even veterans as well, is to create a 50 stack with the 50 reasons why you know that you know that you know that you're the bomb freaking diggity and the no brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth minded real estate agents to partner with. And once you've made those references, maybe five a day over the span of 10 days or 10 a day over the span of five days, and you have 50 references why you know that you're bringing unique value no one else is bringing, you're going to all of a sudden have a mindset shift where instead of coming to get, you know in your heart you're coming to give. Instead of feeling like you have to play the bitch to the realtor, it's like completely the other way around. Instead of feeling like you are interviewing, being interviewed by the realtor, you're interviewing them. Instead of feeling like you need the realtor, you feel like the realtor needs you. And it's not out of arrogance, it's out of confidence. And that confidence comes from a belief system, a rock solid belief table that has you knowing to your core that you have something no one else is offering. You have value no one else is offering. You see, if you were offering a ride in your brand spanking new Ferrari, everything just mint, gleaming and beaming and you're offering a ride in your Ferrari, and you know that person loves Ferraris, how much certainty would you have when you're making that overture that you have something compelling to offer, right? You'd have a lot of certainty. So that's why it's mission critical that you build that belief table up front in advance. So that's the first reason why you may be repelling realtors is you're reaching out and you're like, uh, yeah, is uh, Ralph the realtor there, please? 
Uh, yeah, this is Doran Aldana from ABC Mortgage. And um, I was just wondering if perhaps maybe uh, if you're open to it, uh, if you're not too busy, uh, if maybe, you know, you might consider having a conversation. I'd love to be your lender and you know, I provide great rates and great service. And uh, I'm sure your clients would really love uh, all the amazing products that we offer at ABC Mortgage. Uh, might you be open to having a conversation? Maybe uh, we can go for tea or coffee sometime in the next uh, week or two, or maybe the next month. If you're open, you think maybe if, Maybe if you're open to it, if you don't already have a current lender, right? <laughs> what's the chances they're going to say yes to that? Exceedingly low. Why? Number one, you lack certainty. Number two, you lack confidence. Number three, you're rambling. Number four, your value proposition sucks, right? So there's a lot of different factors, but the certainty, the projection of your voice, the confidence, you don't want to be an arrogance because when you're arrogant, you say you're the best, but you don't know why you're the best. When you're confident, you say you're the best, but you know why you're the best. You see, success is when preparation meets opportunity. So you need to have those references that have it come from your heart, from your core, because you have that preparation that is the precursor to prosperity. And you might be brand spanking new to the business. You'd be like, Doran, how can I have this 50 stack when I'm brand new and there's so much I don't know and there's so much I'm not confident about because I'm still in this steep learning curve? Well, that's where you want to lean on all the successes you've had in the past. You see, you may be new to the mortgage business, but you're not new to winning. True? So from that place of knowing that you're not new to winning, you want to start to own that. You want to breathe and eat all the references, all the instances where you felt the fear, you did it anyways. The odds were stacked against you and you overcame. You were in deep waters and you found a way to win. I want you to start to build those references because that will allow you to roll your shoulders back, put your freaking cape on, own your champion self, and live from that champion identity. And that allows you, again, to project from certainty. So you don't have to be you know, 20 years in the business to have that certainty. You just have to own your champion identity because you may be new to the loan business, but you're not new to winning. And from that identity, you can stand in power, in peace, in poise. And certainty is infectious. Have you noticed? When someone has that swagger factor, that confidence, that certainty, you can't help but say yes, right? Because it's a combination of confidence, certainty, and humility that's compelling, that's inviting, that's infectious, it's attractive, right? So that's the first thing you want to avoid is the lack of certainty, lack of confidence, wobbling in that doubt, in that fear, inadequacy, imposter syndrome. I've struggled with imposter syndrome my whole life. So if there's anyone who can relate to imposter syndrome, it's me feeling like I'm not articulate enough. I'm not educated enough. When I was younger, it's like, I'm not experienced enough. When I was a teenager, it's like, God, I'm not good looking enough. My head's too long. My ears are too big. My nose is too long. All these things, right? And it's just nitpick after nitpick about myself. But if I lived in that place and I continued to give myself references on how much I suck and how much I feel like God messed up with me. Well, then that's the story I live in. And I lived that in that story for way too long. I lived in that story in high school so acutely that they called me bathroom boy. Cause I'd spent all my time in the bathroom, nitpicking about my hair, trying to get my hair just right. Cause I had this faulty belief that if my hair was just right, if I could get my hair just right, then people would like me. People would approve of me that their perception of me determined my value and my worth. What a bunch of crock, right? But that was the faulty belief I was living in. And it stole my peace, my power, my purpose. And ultimately, it kept me in shackles. It kept me in a prison of my own making. So it's important that we liberate ourselves from the prison of our own making by realizing God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. That dream in your heart that you have to win in the mortgage business, 
It's not there to tease you or to tempt you. It's not there to just say, ha, 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 you want to be a successful loan officer? You want to be a successful professional? Well, who do you think you're trying to fool? You're a moron. You don't have enough. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. God's not doing that. God knit you in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. That dream in your heart, it's not there to tease you and to tempt you. It's there to call out the best in you, to call out the best version of yourself so you can live your best life. And once you own that, now you can just stand in that knowing that you were anointed and appointed for such a calling as this. You see, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called, which means that when you realize that dream in in your heart is there, divinely appointed, you realize that you and God is a majority and what's impossible with man is possible with God. It means that when you know that you're living a purpose on purpose with purpose, that's divinely anointed and appointed since you were knit in your mother's womb, that it's no accident while you're here, you can start to surrender and trust. And it's through surrender that you find serenity and strength. You see, your peace is your power. So it's about choosing faith over fear. You can choose fear, you get wobbly in the knees, and it steals your peace, steals your power. Or you can choose faith. And faith has you knowing that you're here for a purpose. Faith has you knowing that if God is for you, who can be against you? Faith has you knowing that there's no accident while you're on this path and that you're here to pursue the promised land, but you don't have to fight all the battles yourself. God is going before you to fight those battles, to conquer those giants, to take that promised land. As long as you'll trust in faith, you see faith gives you not a speed spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Faith gives you that certainty you need. So when you're talking to these realtors, there's an infectious part of your personality that exudes confidence and it's pleasing. It's a pleasing personality that is showing up and shining in that moment when you're able to connect soul to soul with another human being. It's not just a conversation anymore. It's about they're getting connected with your energy, your heart, and they feel the substance of your soul. That's the power of confidence when you're coming from a place to serve You're not coming to get, you're coming to give. Let's move on to the second one. The second reason why realtors don't give you the time of day or won't give you the time of day is because you're showing too many whiskers and not enough cheese. You might be like, Dorn, you're showing a lot of whiskers right now. Dude, have you heard of a razor? Yeah, I only shave once a week and it's always on Sunday night usually. So here I am on Friday and, you know, I'm scruff McGruff rocking the whiskers. I'm not talking about those kind of whiskers. I'm talking about if you want to attract a mouse, you want to show all cheese, no whiskers because they love them some cheese. They don't like whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat, right? <laughs> so you want to show all cheese, no whiskers. You might be saying, well, Doran, these are realtors, not mice. What's the different? Like, how are you? Well, the connection is, is that there are things you may be saying in your approach that are showing whiskers, right? So you might be showing whiskers. And these things you're saying, they're giving them a reason to not be interested, to not want to say yes, to not be open to your overture, to have buyer defense mechanisms. So you want to remove those whiskers and just give them the cheese of what they like, what they love, what they're compelled by, what's interesting to them, what pushes their hot buttons, what's meaningful to them. So show them all cheese, but don't show them any whiskers, not even a little tip of a whisker. Remove all the whiskers. What that's going to allow you to do is make you much more agreeable, much more of an easy value proposition, if you will. So, for example, a lot of people, they'll reach out to a realtor and they'll say, I've got this cool program and that cool program. I've got leads. I got a marketing system. I've got this campaign and that campaign. I can do this for you. I can do that for you. The problem with that is you end up just showing up and throwing up, giving them a data dump. And the more you sell, the more you repel. Have you noticed? The more you sell, the more you repel. So stop trying to convince, persuade, and sell. 
And instead of selling, attract. Attraction is always going to leverage the power of brevity, which means stop telling, stop selling, because all of that is repelling. All that telling and selling is repelling. Instead, attract by giving them all cheese, no whiskers. So rather than just showing up and giving a show up and throw up data dump with all the awesome stuff you can offer them, just simply give them what they do want. So a big piece of what they do want, like if you already had a buyer or a seller and you're looking for a realtor to plug them into, you don't have to kiss butts. You don't have to grovel. You don't have to call a hundred realtors to get someone to pick up the phone for that kind of value proposition, do you? Why? Because all of a sudden you're showing all cheese, no whiskers. But Dorn, I don't have buyers and sellers to give realtors. Well, what if you're starting from scratch and you're building your dream team? Are you going to want to refer a hot for what the realtors got, buyer or seller on the fly in a mad scramble without vetting them first? Or are you going to want to vet your dream team first? So when you do have a buyer and seller, you can plug them in to your client and vice versa, because you already have a vetted dream team that's already been scrutinized, it's already been interviewed. These people are already vetted as top-notch, five-star, first-class, world-class service providers. So you can just plug and play and dish them to the preferred vendor, to the realtor immediately without having to do all that or not do it at all. That's the worst, right? If you don't do that and you're just kind of like, oh, you have a pulse and can fog a mirror and you call yourself a realtor, cool. I'm going to send you a a deal because I'm assuming and presuming that if I send you a deal, you're going to send one back. Well, how many times have you heard of someone sending a deal to a realtor and they don't send Jack Diddley squat back, not one single referral back. Why is that? Because you didn't establish a real relationship. You didn't vet the partnership. You didn't discern and decide whether or not there's someone you want to help, can help, whether you have the right synergy, the right chemistry, you did zero vetting, right? Well, if you do zero vetting and they feel like, Hey, you're just going to, you know, sleep around with anybody, so to speak, and you're kind of loosey goosey. Well, there's no respect in that. There's no honor in that. Like if you don't at least have a few dates and have a few interviews and have a sharing of values and a sharing of energy and a share of the, find out if there's some real value sharing and some real synergistic alliance, chances are you're not going to have deep roots in that relationship because it's like, Hey, there's no substance to you. There's no substance to that relationship. So it's important that you do that first. So when it comes to the reason why you're reaching out to these realtors, if you don't have any buyers and sellers to give to these realtors, guess what? You don't need any because especially if you roll with us here on Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, we arm you with all kinds of wicked effective marketing weapons to help them get more buyers, get more sellers, to help them mine the gold from their database, convert dead leads into hot for what you got leads, help them promote their listings, generate more buyers from their listings, automate the marketing process, capture more leads at their open houses, automatically follow up and convert those into closings show up and shine online with a five-star reputation, get more hot for what you got pre-sold buyers and sellers through Google who are pre-sold on them before they even talk to them. Like there's lots of marketing weapons in this arsenal that we can bring to the table. And when that realtor closes a deal because of the added value support and the marketing initiative and innovation that you brought to the table and they close a deal, they wouldn't have closed otherwise. Are they going to be whining, still and complaining that, they didn't get the deal directly from a buyer or seller you originated? Heck no. They're going to be happy and they're going to be smiling all the way to the bank when they cash that $8,000, $10,000, $15,000 check. Remember, they get paid like three times more, sometimes four times more than you do per deal. So you get one of those deals for them, that's worth like four of your deals, right? So keep that in mind that you don't need to have a buyer or seller in your back pocket to have all cheese, no whiskers. You need certainty that you have the ability to bring buyers and sellers. You need to have certainty that you can bring value, more value than anyone else, more value than any of your competitors. And you need to feel fully aligned, fully convinced, fully 
persuaded to yourself that you're the bomb freaking diggity and the best thing, you know, the, the no brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth minded real estate agents to partner with. So once you're fully aligned like that and fully convinced and persuaded to yourself, now you can speak with certainty. Now you can show all cheese, no whiskers. And now you have the makings of attraction versus repulsion. The third reason why these realtors won't give you the time of day, chances are, is because you have a vanilla value proposition, a vanilla value proposition. What do I mean by that? Well, vanilla, if you like vanilla, you might be like, Dorn, I like vanilla. Vanilla is my favorite flavor. I like vanilla too, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just having plain Jane vanilla value proposition where it's just ho-hum. It's boring, right? Like if you offer great rates, great service, throw me a bone, that's vanilla. If you say you got all these different loan programs, that's vanilla. If you say, hey, I work with the in number one uh, company to do veteran loans in America, that's vanilla. That's There's nothing compelling really about that. Yeah, unless they only work with veterans, then that would be compelling. But most realtors don't just work with veterans. So you need to have a value proposition that makes you stand up way above the crowd. And it it is in sync with the idea that if you want to be the top dog, you want to be zigging while everyone else is zagging. You got to be different, right? You got to have that breath of fresh air difference that has to be like, man, I've never heard that from a loan officer before. I've never had that kind of a value. Or maybe it's something similar to what other smart mortgage pros are offering, but it's the certainty you're bringing. It's the conviction you're bringing, right? I want you to write this down. I am a merchant of certainty. I'm a merchant of certainty. Own that as your identity. Then you match that with a kick-ass value proposition. And we only show cheese with no whiskers. Now we're on to something. Now we're going to start getting some traction. So the value proposition needs to be unique. It needs to be compelling. Those are the two factors in your value proposition. Unique and compelling. Compelling to who? To me? No, to your realtor. It needs to be compelling in their eyes, not in the mortgage professional's eyes. It doesn't matter what the mortgage pro thinks. It matters what the realtor thinks. As a general rule, realtors are about closing more deals with less effort. They're about getting listings, getting buyers, selling more homes faster, easier, better. That's what realtors are about. If you can make your value proposition about that in some way or form or fashion, you're going to have way more success than if you're talking about great rates, great loans, throw me a bone. You know it and I know it. So don't have a vanilla value proposition. Have a Godzilla value proposition, one that is so freaking awesome. It stirs and you know, cause mayhem in the city, right? You want to cause mayhem again in your competitor's mind where they're like, "Uh Oh, Godzilla's in town. I got to run, right? They're going to bust their buns and do whatever they need to do to try and keep up with you. But at the end of the day, you're going to leave them in the dust. That's what you want to do. Have something so compelling. No one else can compete with you, but ultimately it's your energy. It's your certainty. It's your heart connection to purpose that really separates you from your competitors. Because like I often say, you can't be half pregnant and you can't half care. You either care or you don't. So when you really care to your core about people and about serving people and about making a difference in their life, people feel that. They feel your soul character, your soul strength to serve, to make a difference, that you're genuine, that you're authentic, that you're real. And the same goes at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. There's lots of other so-called marketing vendors, mortgage marketing coaches out there. And there's lots of different options out there, right? You got this, you got that. You can buy leads. You can do these coaching programs, those coaching programs. But at the end of the day, the higher you want to build the skyscraper of your dream, the deeper you need to dig that foundation. But if you're digging that hole with a gardening trowel, we got a problem, right? That's doing it the hard way. There's something called an excavator. And an excavator is not only a winning strategy, it's a winning example of what it means to win in life. And that is to live from a purpose of service, right? It's not about coming to get, it's about coming to give. It's about being light in the darkness. And so part of being the excavator versus 
grinding behind a shovel is locking into your purpose because purpose will always outperform a mere pursuit for profit. I will say that again. Purpose to serve another fellow soul will always outperform mere pursuit for profit. And so when you connect to that purpose that's deeper than just pursuit for profit, that unlocks your greatness. That unlocks your true superpower. And we want to lead by example in that. That's our purpose, to lead by example in that and to have you follow suit. And that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com because they can feel our soul to serve. They can feel our desire to serve and our love for serving a fellow soul. They can feel our genuine desire and the fact that we've been doing this for almost two decades. They can feel that level of acumen, expertise, talent, and experience that comes from deep levels of preparation. Like we talked about before, success is when preparation meets opportunity. And there's no replacement for that preparation on the front lines of real life, putting in the reps, right? Skinning your knees. It's not just about inspiration. It's about perspiration. And that preparation is the precursor to your ascension. So the fourth reason why these realtors may, may not be giving you the time of day is commission breath halitosis. <laughs> commission breath halitosis. So that's where you're leaning in to kiss the girl who's leaning away. She's like, oh, commission breath. No, thank you. Right. It's that sense of neediness where you need a deal so you can pay the bills. You need a deal to keep yourself out of hot water financially. You need a deal because it's all about you. You're the center of your universe. If they feel that you're the center of your own universe and it's about you and only you, and it's like me, myself, and I, that's the, you know, the three musketeers that are beating the drum of everything behind why you do what you do, your motive, your motive matters, friend. You have that, they're going to feel it. If you have that energetic frequency of it's all about me, FM, they are going to run and they're going to run fast. So that's where, again, coming back to peace, coming back to trust, surrender, trusting that God's got you and that uh, you're divinely guided. Everything always works out for you. Everything unfolds in divine timing and divine order. And that God's always been there in the past. He'll always be there for you in the future. And that you can just trust and surrender to the process, knowing the process is the pathway to the prize and to pursue mastery in that process and to not compare yourself to others, but compare yourself to the best version of yourself, compare yourself to who you were yesterday and just keep putting in the reps, keep coming to the gym, keep putting in the reps, keep getting just 1% better every day, trusting in faith that in divine timing and divine order, the money's going to come, the deals are going to come, the pipeline's going to grow, right? It's that trust and living by faith, not fear, that allows you to stay out, out of commission breath, where instead of skunking someone with your commission breath and having them want to run, you're attractive because you're in peace and you're abiding in that spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, right? The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. You want to have that fruit of the spirit that has you in strength, right? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. There is strength in peace. There's strength in serenity. There's strength in having your soul be serene because you're in trust, you're in surrender. And it's through surrender that you find strength and serenity. So coming from that place, you're going to find you, your pleasing personality just glows. You're going to be like a bright light on a dark summer's night that attracts the moths, right? You're going to attract those moths like a bright light on a dark summer's night. And instead of chasing, you're going to attract. You're going to have that pleasing personality that has people want to be in your energy orbit. And you know when you feel great, right? When you're in the a, your A game and you feel great, you do great. Why? Because your pleasing personality exudes 
And that bright light that you are is amplified and magnified. You light up like a Christmas tree. When you feel great, vitality, peace, joy, passion, purpose, right? Things just flow. Things just fall into place. When you're in anxiety, fear, worry, overwhelm, imposter syndrome, you're worried where that next deal is going to come from, and you're fearful of not being able to make enough money to pay the bills, all of a sudden now, all that grinds to a halt, and you start to repel, and you start to have imposter syndrome, and you start to second guess yourself. You start to look within, and all of a sudden, it's all about you, and you become narcissistic, and you cave in on yourself. Why do I know all this? Because I do it too. Yes, I'm right there with you, friends. Welcome to the front lines of being human. So it's a human experience. That's how come I know how to articulate it. Because I've been there way more than I, frankly, want to even share that I do. But I'd be lying not to tell you that's the way I've lived much of my life. Falling into that ditch of feeling not enough imposter syndrome. So it's time to live in the light, live in love, live in that light that amplifies and magnifies the power of your leadership. And the fifth, the last and final that we're going to share today, though certainly not the least reason why realtors won't give you the time of day is just simply weak follow-up. You see, if you just make one call and you get a slough off or one text and you get a slough off or one email and you get a slough off. That's weak follow-up friends. Most people are not going to give you the time of day on the first attempt. You got to work past the resistance. Like if you get a text, if you send a text and they say, I'm not interested, you don't just stop just because they say they're not interested. Now, if they say F off, yeah, you leave them alone. If they're, if they go vitriolic on you, and they start dropping F-bombs on you, and they start showing their fangs on you, leave those people alone. Those are the rotten apples. You don't want to stick your finger in those. You don't want to sniff them. You don't want to inspect them. You don't want to like take a bite out of them. Leave that rotten apple alone, right? You want to focus on the green apples and the red apples. And so your job, when you get someone who says no by text or email, for example, or Facebook Messenger, or private message on Instagram or whatever, pick up the phone and call. And you don't want to be annoying because it's like, hey, Ralph, this is Dornell Dana calling from ABC Mortgage. We've been corresponding by text. You mentioned that you know you're you told me you're not interested in having buyers or sellers right now. That's cool. I'm just curious. Is it that you you're not interested in buyers and sellers, or is that you have too much business that you can't handle any more business or is that you are sick and tired of loan leeches and mortgage parasites wasting your time such that you're just now exercising a buyer defense mechanism, knee jerk reaction because you're sick and tired of all these mortgage parasites wasting your time. Which one is it for you? If you'll have that approach, I guarantee you they will open up nine times out of 10 and say, you know what? I'm just sick and tired of getting all these calls all these loan officers wasting my time, or they'll say, I already have a lender. That's cool. I was expecting to have a lender. That's why I'm reaching out because any top-notch realtor with their salt is going to know how invaluable having a top-notch mortgage pro is in their corner. So I'm glad to hear you're no exception. I'm not asking you if you have a preferred lender. I'm asking you, do you have capacity to handle more business right now? Right. All of a sudden, everything shifts. And now you have a meeting a meeting on someone that you reached out to who said, no, thank you, or I'm not interested or stop. What was the difference that made the difference? Your relentless follow-up persistence beats resistance. And the reason why you have relentless follow-up because you realize these people have a buyer defense mechanism and you realize that it's just a knee jerk reaction. And you realize that you need to give them grace for that because if you were in their shoes, you do the same thing. And they just need a dose of your certainty, your confidence. They need a dose of your leadership. They need a dose of the special pizzazz you bring to the table such they realize, wow, this person's worth meeting with. This is different than the average overture. Does that make sense, guys? I'm telling you, friends, this changes everything. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. 
man, this is the most valuable podcast I've listened, listened to in a very long time. You're actually giving me real stuff, real tangible tools, real tangible scripts. You're giving me the example, the living, breathing example of what I need to be and do in order for me to start attracting instead of repelling. If you're like that and you're like, Dorn, I need more coaching. I need more support. I need the tools in the toolbox. This has been a great help. It's wet my palate, but I know I need a whole lot more. I can't afford to be showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. I can't afford to continue to meander in the wilderness, unarmed and naked without a GPS, without a roadmap. If that's you and you make 70 basis points or higher comp, you're a 100% commission residential mortgage professional, and you're sick and tired of sick and tired of doing it the hard way. You're sick and tired of being in the passenger seat versus the driver's seat, waiting for the market to shift just so you can step up your game with your business. You're sick and tired of being the victim to the market. You're ready to be victorious in any market, to win in any market. If that's you and you want to add at least $100,000 plus to your annual income in the next 12 months or less, then I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com, oops, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And on that call, you're going to either get on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We're going to have a real talk, honest conversation about where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you will leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. So if that's you, and if that sounds meaningful to you, and it definitely should, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. My name is Dorn Aldana, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing, easy for me to say, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Hope you found this valuable, helpful, useful, insightful. And again, if you want more information on how we can serve you to next level breakthroughs in your business, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.